My name is Atsushi Buki from Tokyo University, Tokyo. I am honored to participate in this conference. The title of my presentation today is A Reconsideration of the Historical Significance of Fuzhou Shenfei. Now, I will begin the presentation. Introduction Fuzhou Shenfei was known by tradition for being a disciple of the Sixth Patriarch Fuenan, but he was not considered an important figure in the development of Zen Buddhist history. However, the discovery of Shen Fei's writings among the Tungfan manuscripts brought sudden attention to his importance. Scholars noticed uh, undeniable uh, similarities between Shen Fei's writings and the Platform Sutra, and this raised the uh, following issues. When and by whom was the Platform Sutra authored? Uh, does the Platform Sutra reflect the uh, thought of either Feinan or Shen Fei? Did Feinan or Shen Fei have uh, revolutionary ideas? How uh, would we determine if their ideas were new? Uh, were the ideas of Feinan and Shen Fei the same? I think Shen Fei's disciples wrote the Platform Sutra around the year 770, uh, as I have explained in a paper I wrote. Today, I will discuss Fuzhou Shenfei's ideas. Uh, what exactly were Shenfei's original ideas? What ideas of the Northern School did Shenfei adapt? I will discuss Shenfei's ideas as follows. Uh, discourse legitimizing the East Mountain teachings within Buddhist orthodoxy. Uh, this course uh, legitimizing the Southern School by placing it within the orthodoxy of the East Mountain teachings. Uh, this course on meditative experience. This course on the uh, course of practice. Uh, so as to prevent the inclusion of ideas from later generations, I will include here only the texts uh, to which Shen Fei is thought to have had a direct role in their uh, comp compositions, uh, and choose the Northern School texts uh, which were written before Shen Fei was exiled in 753. One, one. This course legitimizing the East Mountain teachings uh, within Buddhist orthodoxy. Uh, to begin with, here are uh, some of representative arguments for this position. Uh, that which Buddha Dharma uh, brought to China and transmitted to uh, Feiku was Fu Zi Chen, Ru Lai Chan, Zui Shan Chan, and so on. The uh, Dharma has been transmitted by eight ancestral teachers from India, as is recorded in the uh, preface uh, of the Tamo Tuoro Chanjin. An ancestral teacher term can only be used by the one and trusted the gate to the Dharma upon the death of the uh, previous generation of ancestral teacher, and so there can be only a single pra uh, patriarch uh, of the uh, Zen Dharma gate per generation. Uh, the uh, patriarchs of Zen in China were Bodhidharma, Huiku, uh, Sanzan, uh, Tao Xing, Honren, and Huinan, each with their own recorded biographies. Uh, most of argument for East Mountain teaching uh, orthodoxy are merely a uh, continuation of Nazan school ideas 
especially those of the Chuan Fa Pao Chi. This should be clear from the following comparison of Shen Fei's writing and the Chuan Fa Pao Chi. I will not have time today, however, to explain this comparison in detail. Section 11 Conclusion uh, Zen Buddhists, in the tradition of the East Mountain teachings, invented the genre of lamp histories after they established themselves in central China. They wrote these texts to convince others that their Buddhism was orthodox. The Chuan Fa Pao Chi was the earliest and most widely this, uh, disseminated of these texts, uh, whose Shen Fei used the Chuan Fa Pao Chi as a reference when he wrote his Din Shi Fei Lun. Uh, so he must have obtained a copy of the uh, Chuan Fa Pao Chi before the Hua Tai debate of 732. Uh, we can see that Shen Fei not only based his Shi Tzu Shui Mai Chuan on the Chuan Fa Pao Chi, uh, but that this text also strongly influenced him as he developed ideas such as those above. This suggests that Shen Fei had not inherited these ideas from Fei Nan. Hui Nan had probably never thought of uh, legitimizing the East Mountain teachings with the lineage of uh, ancestral teachers. Uh, one, two, this course legitimizing the Southern School by uh, placing it in the orthodoxy of the East Mountain teachings. Uh, Shen Fei's main argument that for under this category are uh, as follows. Bodhidharma had given his robe to Fuiku as proof of uh, legiti legitimacy. Uh, Honren had given uh, Bodhidharma's robe to Fuinan in recognition that uh, Fuinan was his uh, legitimate hire. Uh, Fuinan told sudden enlightenment while Shen Shu and his hires, uh, such as Pu Chi, uh, had uh, taught gradual enlightenment. Uh, Shen Shu and Pu Chi taught incorrect cultivation techniques, uh, such as Kan Jin and Yuan Kan, in their teaching of gradual enlightenment. Pu Chi was not a disciple of Hui Nan and was thus unqualified to be called of the Southern School. Uh, Hui Nan finally end, uh, ended the uh, transmission of Bodhidharma's robe as those uh, there were often attempts to steal the robe in ways uh, which endangered uh, the recipient of the robe. After Hui Nan's death, Disciples of the Northern School uh, vandalized his remains and altered his epitaph. He himself was a soul higher to Fuena. At times, uh, Puchi uh, wouldn't answer questions, and that is the wrong attitude. Uh, there are biographies which indicate that Huenan was the sixth patriarch. Uh, the following is a list of passages from Shen Fei's writings uh, which fall under this category. Uh, such uh, discourse is of course not found in the writings of the so-called Nozan School. Uh, section 1 to conclusion. Uh, who's Shen Fei right? to make it seem clear that his southern school was orthodox continuation of the East Mountain teachings. Uh, even his true statements were twisted out of context to suit his own aims. Uh, still, 
as his claims were uh, unprecedented, uh, I think they would have at attacked, attracted a great deal of public attention. Uh, furthermore, it is rather unsurprising that Shen Fei had uh, been forced into the exile, as can be seen from the influence of the Yao Chui in the Southern Southern and Northern Gradual Theory, and the fact that this theory was premised on the idea that Pu Chi had referred to himself as being of the Southern School, it must have been after Shen Fei had uh, moved north and came into contact with the activities of the Northern School that he began to uh, consider it necessary to legitimize the Southern School. Uh, additionally, seeing uh, that Fei Nan had sought to uh, recognize Shen Xu as Sixth Patriarch, uh, the idea of legitima uh, legitimizing the uh, Southern School as uh, orthodox uh, continuation of the East Mountain teachings must have begun with Shen Fei and not Fei Nan. I omit all the explanations of Section 2.1 due to time constraints. 2.2. Discourse on the course of practice. Uh, Shen Fei's main claims in this category are as follows. An uh, intellectual understanding of Buddhism is insufficient. It is necessary to proceed to an experience of seeing nature. Among three dis uh, disciplines, uh, only meditation or quenching requires being Uzo, uh, while uh, morality and wisdom can be meaningful uh, even when they are Yozo. Therefore, one should actively uh, observe the precepts and study the scriptures. A continued pra uh, practice is necessary after seeing nature. Uh, that is uh, sudden enlightenment and gradual practice. Uh, the, uh, there is no uh, separation between uh, before and after enlightenment. All are of equal value, and so true fasting, fast resolve, became especially important. Therefore, there is an insepar uh, inseparability between affliction and uh, body, and samsara and nirvana. Uh, we are never separated from the uh, dharma realm in anything we do. Uh, the following is uh, a comparison of same of Shen Fei's writing uh, with similar claims of the Northern School. Section 2 to conclusion. Uh, the unique points of Shen Fei's theory of practice uh, which stand out are uh, the morality and wisdom, uh, which is Yozo, is variable. And so one should observe the precepts and study the scriptures. Uh, the entire course of practice from first resolve to complete enlightenment is all equal, and that fast resolve is taught to be uh, especially exalted. Uh, even normal people cannot be separated from the Dharma realm uh, in their daily lives. Uh, Shen Fei's ideas on practice are completely uh, unprecedented. Uh, this is different from what I have previously discussed in the above sections. Uh, Shen Fei's ideas on practice are all developed from the idea of sudden enlightenment and gradual practice. 
because this idea can, can also be found in the Yao Chue. It is likely that uh, Shen Fei borrowed uh, this idea and used it to formulate his new teachings. Uh, Shen Fei's um, emphasis uh, on scriptural study is incompatible uh, with the original ideology of the East Mountain teachings, uh, which place the absolute emphasis on obtaining enlightenment. We must consider this to be divisionism. Why would Shen Fei have uh, come up with this idea? I will examine this important issue in the following section. 3. The origin of Shen Fei's revisionist claims. How Shen Fei came to adopt this ideological revisionism is a major question, uh, but fortunately, we can find the key to answering these questions in the uh, following criticisms of Zen by Tzu Min San Zhang Hui Li in his Jin to Tzu Pei Ji. In this text, Hui Li claims uh, the idea that the seeing of the world as empty tranquility is awakening. Uh, part of the Zen practice of Kan Jin is wrong. Hui Li claims this is merely stopping thought. The claim that of the three uh, disciplines or six parameters, the idea uh, that only meditation is Wu Wei, uh, that which is unmade is wrong. Uh, by this claim, uh, Wu Wei would be something which could be practiced and would change. Yet this is inconsistent with the uh, teachings of the sutra which say uh, Uwe is unchanging. Uh, the teachers of Zen don't study the sutras and teach irresponsible nonsense. Uh, their followers respect as being something of value. The teachers of Zen are morally lax, and many of them don't observe the precepts. Uh, Tzu Min claims to have known this uh, first hand and not from inference. Uh, what is important here is the second, third, and fourth of Tzu Min's criticisms above correspond to Shen Fei's ideological revisions. It is as if Shen Fei had made his revisions to the Northern School teachings on the basis of Tzu Min's criticisms. Uh, we must conclude from these points not only that Shen Fei was familiar with the dissatisfactions and uh, criticisms of the Northern School from the Buddhist of other schools of thought like uh, Pure Land Buddhists, and that Shen Fei had actually been reading Tzu Min's Chin uh, Tu Tzu Pei Ji, uh, moreover, as the influence of the text can already be seen in his Ting Shi Fei Lun, uh, Shen Fei must have gotten his hands on a copy of the Jin Tu Tzu Pei Chi at a very early date, uh, like he had with the uh, Chuan Fa Bao Chi. If this is the case, uh, it would seem that Shen Fei's criticism of the Northern School was related to Tzu Min's criticisms of such practices as uh, Kan Jin. While Kuan Xin and Kan Jin had already been criticized uh, in the Tin uh, Shi Fei Lun from the uh, uh, perspective 
of the、uh, equivalence of meditation and wisdom.、Uh, Shen Fei's idea that meditation in the Northern school is nothing more than a, a denial of sensual perception is in line with Tzu Min's assertion that Kanjin is nothing more than stopping thought. I think it is possible that Shen Fei's、uh, redire uh, redirections of the Northern School's、uh, criticism of Hinayanist、uh, to be against the Northern School itself、uh, may also have been、uh, greatly influenced by Tzu Min's criticisms. Still,、uh, Shen Fei's advocacy of observing the precepts and the scriptural study are seen in his Tang Yi. So, at the time of the Tin Shi Fei Lun, at least,、uh, these were not yet explicitly、uh, stated.、Uh, the Tang Yi seems to have been written after Shen Fei entered the Uh, his monastery of Luoyang,、uh, it is quite considerable,、uh, conceivable, it is quite conceivable、uh, that uh, this necessary,、uh, necessity of avoiding、uh, conflicts uh, with the con conventional、uh, Buddhism of the state uh, upon moving the, to the center of imperial power. Could have led Shen Fei to change his ideology. A conclusion. At a glance, many of his Shen Fei's claims seem to be very innovative and revolutionary, but when we compare Shen Fei's writings to those of the Northern School, we find that this is not so. In conclusion, Uh, the reason it seems at first glance、uh, that Shen Fei's ideas were so innovative is mostly depends on the fact that Shen Fei was more of a skilled、uh, propagandist than an ideological innovator.、Uh, this concludes my presentation.、Uh, thank you very much.